Welcome to the Tuning In Podcast, where we talk alignment, intuition, and our internal guidance system. We cover woo-woo topics in an approachable and practical way. I'm your host, Dana Evans of Alignful.com. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. This is episode 114. So today, I am happy to share that (laughs) what we're talking about today is what I've been up to for the past two days and how it relates to life and business and how us following our inner nudges, (laughs) no surprise, (laughs) is a really powerful way to open up new portals in our lives. So it's story time, everybody. (laughs) It's story time. So a while ago, you may remember if you've been listening to my podcast, I started the Clothis Project, and I'm in here now recording this episode, where I decided John works from home full-time, and I had turned the guest room that was once our guest room, I had turned it into my office. And I this was in February of 2020. I had it painted. I got plants in there. It was so beautiful. And it was mine for all of one month. (laughs) My inner knowing must have known we were going to need a beautiful office space because it was mine for one month. And then March 2020, John started working from home and he's been working from home ever since. He's had two jobs since then. Both have been remote. His newest job is fully remote and he works in the office. And I, I mean, I I do coaching calls. (laughs) And I do voice memoing. And so a lot of my work is on audio and video. And so that doesn't work well when you're sharing an office space because, and then he now especially has a lot of calls. So it's like, you can't have two people in the same office, like one doing a coaching call and one taking a work call. Like it just doesn't work. So I had been working in the living room, on the couch, in the bed. I took tons of calls from my bed until I realized that like, that's probably not great energy for the bedroom. Like I need our bedroom to be, have clear energy. So I finally got creative and decided to turn our master closet, which is off of our bedroom, turn our master closet into my office, hence the office, and then turn our, we have a beautiful big laundry room that was poorly utilized. And I was like, well, that can be our closet, which makes sense anyway. Like you do laundry there, may as well get dressed in there. Well, I started the project and in true Dana form did not complete it. There was like too many things that needed to happen. And so what's happened, unfortunately, is we have an incomplete office and an incomplete laundry room. So the laundry room has nowhere to hang clothing. And it was like a catch-all for like everything. So it not only had like our clothes, it also had like all my bar stuff and appliances and like all sorts of stuff that does not need to be in there. And then I also had clothing hanging in my clothes. So there's clothing hanging there, which I'm like trying to keep out of frame when I do video calls. Then there's other hanging clothes that are like draped in our bedroom. It's just like it wasn't freaking working. And I thought, okay, for as long as I'm going to be here, I want to enjoy my space. That's why I started this project in the first place. So I've been feeling like I need to do something about it, but I haven't had like the inspiration. So on Sunday, I'm sitting down having a casual Sunday and I opened my email and I got an email from Club Magic Hour, which is this amazing tea company that if you're a client of mine, you've likely gotten tea from them because I love gifting it. It's such a beautiful experience. It's a woman owned company. She's actually Ukrainian. And it's just the most gorgeous tea. And I opened an email from them and they're talking about feng shui. I'm like, okay. So I click this and she was interviewing this woman named Tisha Morris all about feng shui. So I watched it. It was like a 30 minute interview. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I got so inspired. (laughs) And what she had us do, she's like, okay, take a minute. But sit down and just envision like, what is your least favorite space in your home? 
And I envisioned it. I was like, well, it's my laundry room. That is my least favorite space. Also a very used space. And she's like, okay. And then think about what it is that you don't like about it. And I thought, well, it's dark. It feels heavy. It's cluttered. It doesn't have a clear purpose. It's kind of a mismatch catch all. And it doesn't feel functional. It doesn't feel beautiful. And it never feels organized or clean. And she said, okay. And then take that because their home is it's a reflection of us. She's like, so take that area and you can reflect on where in your life are you feeling these similar things? And if you focus on clearing a space in the home, it can also help clear out that energy in your life. And I was like, sold. And I mean, I assume these are basic feng shui principles. I don't really know much about feng shui. So if this is obvious to you all, then don't mind me, but I was really excited about that. I'm like, this makes sense. Another thing she said, which this might just be a hot tip for any of you. She's like, here's a good way to find out if there's any blocked energy or stuck energy in your home. She said, if there's somewhere where you're constantly bumping into something, that is an indicator that there's blocked energy. And I just love that tip because for me, it's actually our coffee table, which is this chest. So my grandfather, my dad's dad was in the army and this is a wooden chest that had his belongings in it that they shipped to wherever he went in the army. It says John D. Evans on it. It's very special. It's, I mean, to me, it's a family heirloom, but we're using it as a coffee table and it doesn't function well. It's too low. You know, we don't want to like mess it up. The shape isn't right. It kind of like is squeezed in there and I bump into it all the time. So for me, that was an indicator also that that needs a new home, which, oh my God, as I'm saying that, I just visioned it in my cloth. This actually, it might look really beautiful in my cloth as like a place to sit. So I might move that there and get just a different coffee table. Just a little side note. So And then this woman has a book coming out in the fall, which isn't out yet, but I really want it. (laughs) Just got me so excited about like moving the energy in my house. And this is something I love anyway, but this was the thing, right? You know, often we need like, if something's floating around, it needs to be activated, especially for me as a projector. Like I don't just have a bunch of energy floating around to do shit. Like I really, really don't. But when it's an aligned experience, the energy shows up and I can, I'm very efficient and very effective. So that was Sunday. And I'm like, okay, I walk into John, John, the manifester. And I inform him. I said, John, I am tackling our laundry room today. Like I'm over it. It needs to be done. I'm going to go to bed, bath and beyond. I'm going to clear out. You're going to go through your clothes. We're doing it. He's like, okay. (laughs) And by we, I mean, I, Like all of these house projects, I pretty much tackle solely on my own. I have emotional support from John. (laughs) He lets me do whatever. Like he doesn't hassle me or like ask a bunch of questions as long as I inform him as what's going on. Hot tip on living and loving a manifester. Tell them what's going on. (laughs) So in true Dana form, I got way more than I bargained for this project holy guacamole like I cleaned this out before like I actually emptied the entire laundry room a few months ago when I started the clawfish project and was like how is all this stuff in there and I did a massive clean out then and I did it again on Sunday so I just did it I first took all of my clothing out then I took all of John's clothing out and then I was like well just screw it. I took everything out of the laundry room. And our, if you followed me on Instagram this weekend, you'll see the before and afters. You would have seen what our living dining room area looked like. I mean, it looked like the house vomited. <laughs> it was all the insides. And I think that's such a good practice too, in terms of like energy movement of like, there's so much stuff that's just stored and hidden, right? And it's unseen. And I talk about this in in the work that I do, right? When you're doing emotional clearing is so much that is unsaid that lives in the dark corners underneath the surface. That is really potent energy. 
And if it stays repressed and hidden, it is not effective. It creates a lot of turmoil and physical manifestations of things that you may not desire, but it's all because you don't want to look at the dark, dirty corners. So in the emotional clearing work I do, like we get it out, like we speak it, we look at it, we let it come out, we let it express itself, we shine the light on it so it doesn't live repressed anymore. And I think about that with our homes, like how many cubbies and drawers and closets of stuff do you have that's just like, I don't want to look at it. And for me, I actually love doing clear outs. I've talked about them often on this podcast, but still these things kind of like I'm looking at my desk drawer right now and I know it's full of papers. My next project is actually to like take all the papers from all of our desks and drawers and go through all of them. And then have one place where papers go, right? We have like 10 places and like you can never find any papers. So there's all these like weird little pockets of trapped energy in our homes, just like we have pockets of trapped energy and emotions in our bodies. So of course, I love doing my home clearance because it's it runs so parallel to the work I do in life, right? With my clients, with myself, emotional clearing, emotional feeling and clearing. So take everything out and I'm like, oh God. And you know that moment you do that and you're like, what have I done? Why did I embark on this? This is going to end me. (laughs) But I had energy. So did a lot of going through stuff, went through all of my clothing and then put it into categories. Like I took everything out of all the drawers. You know, usually I just like refold what's in the drawer. It's like, no, I took everything out. Then I had this idea, there was this one dresser that I hate. (laughs) It's so mean, but like, I really don't like this dresser. It weighs like 3 million pounds. It's this dark old 80s oak stained with like rounded corners. We've had it. It was John's parents and, you know, it served its purpose. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm so over it, but we didn't, I didn't want to buy another dresser. (laughs) Because that like opened a whole can like I'm like, if I buy one dresser, I should just buy more dresser. And then all of a sudden I was in this place where I had to redesign the whole closet and create a whole laundry room closet alpha setup for six thousand dollars, which is why I stopped in the first place, because the project became too big and too overwhelming. And I didn't want to invest the time and money into it. And so I just stopped. So this time I'm approaching it from I want to do some spend some money, spend some time to make it functional without like overhauling the whole space. So I had this idea to get rid of that chest of drawers, which had all John's clothes, put his clothes in my chest of drawers, which I actually like, and then move my clothes to like a cubby system. So after I did like an initial sweep of stuff, then I made a list and I was like, John, I am going to Bed Bath & Beyond and I'm getting supplies. (laughs) So I ventured out. I was there for probably over an hour and I got storage bins and pretty storage, like these woven cloth basket type things and the cube system. And I got some new hanging clothing racks because that's something that we needed. All this stuff. I got so much stuff. And then I came home. John helped me load it all back in. And then I started with the bigger vision of then I was even more overwhelmed, right? Because then I had, and this is just, no, like as I'm talking about this, this is a metaphor for working with me. (laughs) It's like first things start to come out and you're like, oh my God. And bit by bit, they're like pulled out and like, then they're sitting on the floor in your living room and you're like, how do I put this all back in? And the point is you don't put it all back in. But when you first are looking at everything, like your deep inner thoughts and feelings exposed, It feels really intense and scary because you're like, how was I holding all of that on my own? And that's what I I looked at the laundry. I'm like, how did you hold all of this crap? (laughs) And I'm staring. Now I have all these bins, all this storage stuff. And I'm like, I am so overwhelmed. And so then I went, you know, I'd already done my clothing. So I finished up with that. Then I went through our coats. Then I built things, right? So I'm like in the middle of the floor building the clothing racks. And then John was watching a soccer game. And so I brought his clothes to him. And he he had so much stuff that he doesn't use. 
so old. And so he went through that. He And he just handed me, he's like, keep, get rid of, keep, get rid of, keep, get rid of. So went through all of that, which was awesome. And <laughs> it's like, it, it has to be iterative. Like my desire is always to like embark on that and do it all in one go. But I run out of energy and it doesn't have to be done all in one go. So once, actually before I hit my wall, it was around probably four o'clock on Sunday. I said, okay, I think I have to just live with the living room is still a mess. I did a ton of reordering of the furniture in the laundry room, like totally changed the flow, which I'm so excited about. I emptied out We also have a closet in the laundry room, which was our coat closet, which is now going to be our clothing closet for hanging clothes, and then put all the coats on a coat rack in the living room. And then I said, okay, now I'm done. I made myself a cocktail (laughs) and relaxed. And that was a big win because, again, I used to keep pushing even after I'd run out of energy. And now I've, I've learned about myself being a projector and just like managing my own energy flow it's like letting go of the perfectionism of it needing to be done. Like I used to be like would push through and be like vacuuming at like 10 PM just to get it done. But now I know there's no rush. And so I can step back before I run out of energy, relax, sleep, and then start again the next day. And same with this emotional work. Like we don't have to push through everything all the time. And just because something surfaces, it doesn't mean you have to like keep going and going and going until it's cleared. Like it will keep presenting itself. It will be there and you can iteratively address it and move through it. You don't have to rush to get there. And that's a big thing that my clients come in. They're like, oh, can't I just be on the other side where I'm done with this? It's like, no, like this is, yes, it's an in-depth experience when we work together for three, six, nine, 12 months. And also it's like an ongoing clean out. It's just like you have to keep doing your laundry and folding your clothes and putting your clothes away (laughs) and then throwing away, recycling the things that don't fit or that have holes in them, right? It's like, this is an ongoing process, but the initial, right? The initial purging is the most intense, right? You got to get all the stuff that's stuck and buried. You have to get all that out. That's what the work with me is. It's like an initial purging. And then you can have that energetic hygiene and emotional maintenance so that you don't get stuff built up and that you can live in more of a neutral, calm, joyful space. So I stopped, slept yesterday. I woke up and I was like, oh God, it's still there. (laughs) Um, And just reminded myself one step at a time, like little by little, a little becomes a lot, as Sean Croxton always said. And I just started putting things back together. I refolded all of my clothes, all of John's clothes, put them in their drawers, in their new spaces. I vacuumed, I swept, I dusted, I cleaned all the surfaces inside and out, rearranged me as a litter station, which is like the hardest part is that that also lives in the laundry room. It's kind of like, it's an obstacle for sure. And then I'd like gotten most of the things back in there and I was really happy, except I still am not happy with the layout. So like, I still need to move things around. I'm going to order a rug, put the light fixture back up. And then I'm still left with the outflow of the rest of the house, right? Because you take all this stuff out, not all of it goes back in. And so then it's like, okay, where do these things go? I have a massive mound of clothing that I'm going to go through. And I just learned that Well, one, I don't like to take stuff to Goodwill. There's like a high percentage of Goodwill stuff that ends up in the dump, like a high, high percentage. So I like to take my clothing to a local Denver charity where they're like giving their stuff directly to communities who need it. So the stuff that's good, so I have to go through that pile of stuff that's good. I'm going to keep and find the charity and take it there. And then the stuff that we don't want or that has holes in it, or that just isn't up to snuff for resale or for donation, it turns out you are not supposed to throw this stuff away. Like you don't want your clothing ending up in a landfill, but they have what is called textile recycling programs. And I Googled that and there's a couple right in Denver. So for you, if you're cleaning out your closet, like to me, like part of 
an energetic, emotional, and physical clean out is responsible disposal, right? Which is why a lot of times people come to me because their emotions are coming out, disposing themselves in inappropriate ways. Like they snap or like lose a fuse at their partner, or they like break down crying over something really insignificant and like lose their shit that's an improper disposal of the emotions, right? We need to be able to move through them and have a system and process to go through them so that they can actually be processed and not just like ejected out of your body. I call that like, because we call them emotional beanbags that are stuck in your body, that trapped energy. And I say, if if you don't move them properly, you end up just having a beanbag fight with people. Like I react and throw my unprocessed emotions at them. They throw their unprocessed emotion at me. It's like, a total dumping zone. So same as with the stuff that comes out of your home, at least in my opinion, I don't want to just dump it all at the goodwill because that's kind of like, I guess it's better than just throwing it all away. But for me, it's less effective to do that knowing that a huge percentage of the stuff at the goodwill is deemed unsellable and they just throw it away. That kills me. So I don't want my stuff that I clear out that makes me feel good, that creates more energetic space for abundance and clients and love and flow in our lives. I don't want that to create heaviness and density and trash in the world. (laughs) Just like I don't want my unprocessed emotions to create hate and pain and emotional outbursts in the world. So textile recycling, I didn't know about this. So I'm so excited about this. And I'm sure you have a local program if that interests you and you're doing a clean out. So that's kind of my next phase. So last night I got my dining room table back together because that's always a, that's a good barometer for what's happening in our life is if our dining room table is a disaster and stacked with all sorts of stuff, it's a good indicator of what's happening. So when I want to feel good internally and like feel more settled, I tackle the dining room table. So I cleaned all that off. I dusted it. I put the runner back on. I put the pottery on it and it looks all pretty. And then I vacuum the whole area and there's still more to do, but this has become a more fun and flowy experience because I'm not rushing it. And so like bit by bit, the closet laundry room is looking really lovely. I literally was up last night though. I'm like, something's not right. Like it's still not quite right. And it's a, it's a feeling for me. So usually like I get the vision, like I totally re reformatted the whole laundry room. I'm so happy with it. But then there's like these energetic sticking points where it's a kind of a tight space for what we have in there. So it's not going to be this beautiful, open flowing space because I'm not willing to invest the money to make it that. So I'm working with what we have, but I know like in my projectorness, like looking at the bigger picture and rearranging and reorganizing like there's just a couple things that need to fall into place and when they do it's going to be perfect and that leads me to my final point that today is a break day so today is Tuesday so I did like I worked on it for probably 15 hours (laughs) between Sunday and Monday I was very tired And then today I'm actively choosing to step away. So just like when I do, this is part of my work process. Every time I get this hit to like do some serious cleaning and organizing or like tackle a project in the house, I know it is my inner voice guiding me to make space for what is to come. So I just trust at this point in my life that like if I need to spend a few days or a week in deep immersion of doing house projects, I know so deeply in my soul that that is the work that I need to be doing right now that is going to pay off in the future because I need to create physical, energetic, and emotional space for whatever is on its way to me next. And that's the other thing I find when doing these projects is my own emotions. So I've had to do quite a bit of my own emotional work Because I've had a lot of beanbags coming up in this process of clearing out. And you'll find that, like, again, that the parallel, the mirroring rather, of your physical space and your inner energetic emotional space, like, it cannot be denied. So when you do projects like this, you might notice you're maybe a little edgy or agitated or annoyed 
or really tired or you, you're crying or anything that might come up, just know that that's processing energy with your house as well. It's your own stuff that needs to come up and be processed. So that's part of my working process is that when I get those hits to like tackle a project, I do it because I know that on the other side of that is something new that needs to come into my life. And I take time with it. I honor exactly what needs to come through. So with that, today is a rest day because just like any work project that you're doing, it's important to step away. So we don't need to keep pushing through. So I'm stepping away today, trusting that whatever the final flow pieces that need to come through will come through this week. But today I'm doing the podcast. I'm doing computer work. I have a call, a coaching call, and then I'm just going to make a delicious dinner and let that be my day. (laughs) Knowing that something big, some big shifts are coming my way. It's time to clean out and make space. This is also a good time for eclipse season. I think up until like June 2nd, any clean out and clear out that you can do, that you feel called to do, whether it's emotional, physical, is going to be extra impactful. So allow yourself to do that. And I'll end with just this memory because I remember the very first time that I ever listened to this clear out nudge that I was aware of it. It was years ago. I had quit my full-time job. Oh, the hawk is outside. I see our hawk as I'm talking. He's out the window. Hi, buddy. I had quit my full-time job. So this was probably like four years ago. And I'd been working not like a projector, just like trying to just busy myself all day long. And it was a spring, a warm spring day. I was talking on the phone with my mom. And as I was talking to her, I was like, mom, I think I need to clean my front patio, like my little front entryway. And so I'm talking to her and I'm sweeping and I'm like sweating and moving stuff around and like wiping everything down. And I said, this is the weirdest thing. Like, I know I should be working right now, but instead, all I want to do is clean. (laughs) And she's like, well, that's crazy, Dana. Like, maybe just listen to that. And that it just memory comes up as like one of the first times where I thought I should be working, but all I want to do is clean. And I wasn't aware yet that that is literally part of my work process. So I invite you to just notice if there's anything, whether it's cleaning or organizing, or like you like need to go to the coffee shop, or you need to call someone, like calling a friend, or reading a book, or something. Just knowing that the process of working is also the process of living. So whether it's that need to go on a walk or lie in the grass outside or take an afternoon off, there's a lot more ebb and flow and flexibility and a lot can unfold in the spaciousness. Whether we're creating space or we're taking space, it's an indicator of a bigger aspect of your life. And for me, I know that when I'm doing this type of thing, like very physical things in my home, in my space, it's also a way for my subconscious mind to work as well. So my mind is active and like it's occupied with doing these tasks and projects, which takes it away from like worrying or stressing or being like, I should be doing something else. So it's busy which makes more space for that unconscious processing, right? Which is why a lot of times people say like, oh, I have my best ideas in the showers. That idea is that if you can do a monotonous, repetitive task that occupies the mind, then that opens up space for your subconscious mind, your unconscious to process and for insights and awareness to bubble up. It also, of course, tells the universe, right? When you're making space and taking space that you have openings for that, which you desire. Because if every nook and cranny is full, if every nook and cranny in your brain is full, if you're packed down with unprocessed energy and emotions, there's no space for calling in what you desire, right? You can't fill a full cup, right? It's like if you add more water to a cup that's full, it overflows, which I know there's the phrase like my cup floweth over. (laughs) 
which can be really beautiful. But when you think of like inviting new things into your life, if your cup is full of tar and you want to fill it with clean ionized water, (laughs) it's going to be really hard. So it's like, we got to let the tar move out so that we can fill it up with the clean water. So that's where I'm at. I just wanted to share that with you all. Always trusting those nudges, trusting, you know, the winks from the universe and following that flow and seeing what it opens up for you. So as always, thank you for tuning in and I'll catch you next week. Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. As always, if this would resonate with anyone you know, please share the episode. You can follow along with my journey on Instagram at Dana underscore Evans or find me on my website at alignful.com.